Okay, we're rolling here. Uh, we're with Neil and Edward aboard Scrumpet, the uh, British team, which is currently in uh, first place, tied with the uh, Ronstan boat from Australia. Uh, give us a little background on uh, your two uh, skiff sailing over the years. So I've now been in the fleet for uh, 12 years. Um, so I started off when I was 15, uh, sailing with my dad, um, and sailed with a few different people since then, um, and jumped on the boat with Ed uh, about three years ago, um, and have been enjoying the success since, which is great. Okay. I'm, I'm a relative newcomer really, I've only been doing it for three years now. Uh, my background was in 49 sailing before. Um, we were kind of going for the Olympics and then changed circumstances and I thought I'd give it a go in the 14. I've been loving it ever since. You guys weren't so uh, shabby in the 49er. Uh, we gave it our best go. We, we had a couple of highlights. We were third at the Europeans in 2012. Um, but yeah, you know, it's, there's always a long way to go to, to get the gold medal that you really want in that class. Yeah, and uh, a lot more numbers as far as 49ers go, uh, I imagine. But uh, the, the Brits kind of invented the 14, and uh, the fleet is pretty strong in Great Britain, though. No? That might be quite contentious in Australia. <laughs> I think they'd say they invented it. There seems to be some uh, some differing views. But uh, yeah, we've, we've got a strong fleet in the UK. We've, we've got 14, I think, boats here yeah. at this event. And uh, back home, we, we regularly see 30 to 40 boats at our nationals. Is that right? And the, uh, the fleet's really built upon um, everyone kind of sailing uh, around a similar area and, and, and kind of boats traveling up to, to different locations so everyone can sail together and, and, and just inherently get better and better. Okay. Um, as they keep sailing. So I think the British standard across the whole fleet is very, very high um, compared to some of the other countries, which is great to see. Okay, and you mentioned earlier that uh, sailing on the 49er isn't that dissimilar from sailing one of these? No, not really. I mean, obviously, do you have the width? There's a big difference in width, but uh, for most of the other part, it's still a twin trapeze, very overpowered skiff with a big spinnaker. Um, I think a lot of people get uh, caught up in the adjustability between this boat and the 49er and it being a dip uh, in the vertical as a development class, but I think we've seen a lot of uh, convergence on a similar path, especially in the recent five years or so. So actually, they're, they're kind of getting more similar in that sense at the moment. Okay. So if you're a 49er sailor and you've even thought about it a little bit, would you encourage them to uh, give it a go? Definitely. I think if you if you don't want to go Olympic sailing, there's there's no better boat to sail than the 14. Okay. Yes. And there's a tad bit of tinkering that goes on with these boats versus the 49er because they're a class rule. Ah, it depends. I think the, the the way you approach a 49er campaign, everything is perfect. So you spend hours and hours doing the tiny little things. Whereas in the 14, it, you have to be more accepting. You are an amateur. Okay. So people like to tinker. People enjoy it. It's part of what they sometimes enjoy in a 14. But if you don't enjoy it, if you're like us, we try and keep everything the same. Actually, there's, there's not that much to it. Okay. Now, um, with the uh, um, 14 uh, here, there was talk recently in years of uh, perhaps going completely foiling. Is that uh, just balderdash or is it uh, a for real thing? I think there's a lot of fleets at the moment trying to go foiling because they think it's going to be the next big thing. I think for some fleets it is. It's a great thing. You look at the moths and they've got 200 boats at the end of their worlds and all that sort of thing and it's great. I think I think for the 14 it's, it's one of the only places where you can go and have uh, you can have two relatively big guys um, sailing a twin trapeze skiff um, that's pretty quick and pretty fun to sail with a decent fleet. Um, I think going foiling would, would probably ruin that. Um, I know there are some people that, that want to do it. I think secondly, uh, if you look at how difficult the moth is to sail, um, I did a couple of years and the moth and was very bad at it. Um, <laughs> I mean, compared to these things, it would just be a nightmare. I, I, really I, I, take, I take it you're opposed then. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, just, I just think it'd be, it, would make, it would make the class sort of, but It'd probably kill the class. Okay. Um, you guys are doing quite well. You're tied for first here. Um, I take it you probably haven't sailed that many times before in San Francisco Bay. What, what's been working for you? Uh, just uh, just uh, staying upright, you would say. <laughs> just consistency is, uh, has been our key, I think, for this whole event. We, we kind of came into the event knowing that you, you definitely wouldn't have to win every race to be able to win the event. Um, and you know, the, the, the event's still got two, two races to go, and a lot can still change. Uh, there are some big drops in there um, where if someone has a breakage or a mistake or whatever, um, it could all change. And swimming is slow out here. Swimming is slow. Yeah, we found that yeah. out in the first couple of days. We uh, we lost our ability to jive on the uh, third and fourth day um, after leading two races. So um, yeah, we've got that back now. So we're we're charging back on track. All right. Good luck, guys. Thank you.